So, with the summoning stuff for now... What now? I, I guess all we can just do is just, just go back to Foundation. No, nope, no, nope, we're totally going there. I'm right behind you, bro. I'm worried about her too. Shorty Pants, what are you doing still outside in the cold? Why aren't you inside? D do we need a little more support? Okay, alright. Come on, let's go on together. You'll be okay. Hi, Lucia. You still don't say anything new after all this? Camera, camera, move to a more favorable angle, please. Just not behind. It. Thank you. Okay, it's a little better. Well, we we did it. Oh, hooray! You stole actually did something. Yeah, you might want to go tell Elfino who sit is still sitting outside. He might like to know this information. Oh, look how happy Tataru is. Alize, how are you feeling? Well enough, brother. Thanks to the kindness of our hosts. When they told me you had departed for Zelfatol, I found that I could rest. The outcome seemed a mere formality, as did your safe return. Thank you, my friend. You are welcome. I take it your mission was a success. No, no, we totally failed and we just came here anyway. Of course we succeeded. As if we needed any further confirmation that they are in league with the Asians. But to save another world? I think not. I too thought his story fanciful at first. But it is possible there may be a kernel of truth in all of this. At the very least, none of his claims contradict the word's account. Yeah, and let's not forget about Operation Absolute Absurdity. As, as crazy as Derpla, evil Derplander and his crony s story sounds, it, it's one of those things that it's just as an Operation Episode of Saturday crazy enough to work, it, it's crazy enough to be true. You know, the whole truth is stranger than fiction thing. You were following these people, Alize. Why? So you don't need your permission. Not really. During my travels, I had often enjoyed tales of the Scions and their exploits. But after a time, I began to hear whispers of a gifted and theretofore unknown band of adventurers. Adventurers who had supposedly sworn to travel the realm slaying primals in the Scion's stead. Yeah, you guys all been lazy. The Warriors of Darkness. And in the course of investigating these rumors, you stumbled upon the Asian's involvement. Yes, exactly. Are you hiding something from me? Forgive me, but if these warriors of darkness mean to bring about another calamity, to what end do they hunt primals? To prompt an escalation. To deepen the beast tribe's feelings of helplessness and despair, and thereby drive them to summon ever more powerful gods. And lest we forget, these events do not occur in isolation. With their patron deities being slain left and right, the news of man's victory over Nidhogg must surely have sown panic in the minds of the Beastmen. Tis no wonder they wish to defend themselves. Oh my god, somebody actually gives a crap about Nidhogg being dead. Again. Thank you, writers. Thank you! Power answered with greater power. Death with more death. A vicious cycle fueled by fear and hatred. I know it's like all too well. Indeed. The Asians sow discord and desperation. 
and the warriors of darkness reap the harvest. And so it continues. Yet that is not the extent of their ambitions. The Asian himself observed that once the powerless realize that the old gods have failed them, they will have little recourse but to look to a new one. We cannot let that happen. It should come as no surprise, but Alize and I have uncovered evidence that the Asians have been manipulating certain parties to ensure that a constant stream of crystals flows into the hands of the beast tribes. Okay, so how about we cut off their supply? If we sever these supply lines, we should at least be able to slow the escalation. Thank you, Sacred. Actually saying something smart. Agreed. Kral and I shall journey to Zelfatol and learn what we can of the Ixar's source. Yeah, you're welcome for clearing the path, by the way. Then I, for my part, pledge to lead a similar investigation into the origin of the Nath supply. Sir Emmerich? As a member of the Eorzean Alliance, Ishgard is on a bound to play an active role in maintaining the security of the realm. You might also say that I have some personal motivation, given the Asian's dealings with my father. However, I make no secret of the fact that my knowledge of primal beings is scant at best. As such, I should be most grateful if one of your order were to assist me. Allow me, Sir Emmerich. I have dealt with the Nath before. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the way Thancred says that sounds almost way too flirty. But not that anything is actually going to come of this. Let us consult with Orianja then. Given his dedication to the study of primal beings, I should be surprised if he could not tell us something of value. Hold on, Alphino, hold on. Uh, even though nothing is going to come of it, I'm actually glad Sir Emmerich is being, like, allowed to... and not talked out of actually coming with us and directly helping us. I really like that. Allow me to accompany you, brother. And before you think to refuse, Know that I am not the girl I once was. I shall not be a burden. You have my word. You just got shot! But Alize, you... Yeah, she ain't taking no for an answer here. You are more than welcome. After all, it was you who set us upon this path. Alright, now will you two just hug already? Like, seriously, come on. Wait a minute. I'm afraid I can't allow you to leave just yet. Not until you try on the new outfit I prepared for you. Oh my god, look how happy Tataru is. So yeah, a lot of people were like... Kind of angry. Or at least irritated, I guess. That, oh my god, why has Tataru not made us something yet? She's known Alize all of five minutes. Why does she get something new? Uh, guys, guys, hate to break it to you. They know each other. They have known each other. Perhaps not particularly well, but remember Alize came to the Rising Stones with us. One of the first scenes where we actually discover that, yes, uh, Alphano is indeed, you know, a scion of the Seventh Dawn, and we actually see him in the Rising Stone for the first time. The cutscene is Minfilia asking him where his sister is. The whole Binding Coil of Bahamut storyline starts in the timeline before the Scions actually... Did I just say Rising Sons the first time? Waking Sands, whatever. But that actually starts before we actually move to Mordona. Tataru is basically among, as well as being the secretary, is kind of the guard dog of the Waking Sands and nobody gets in here there. Unless absolutely by force, as like Elidibus and the actual Empire raid on the Waking Sands, without her permission. Like, we needed the formal invitation from whoever Scion represented the starting city to even get in there the first time. She's seen Alize come and go before. They know each other. Perhaps you don't see that on screen or anything like that, but it's not like Tataru is just like, oh, I totally met Alfie's sister for the first time. Hooray, I might as well do something nice. Given, you know, given that the whole journey we took 
to relive the memories of what we've done on our journey to, to solve the Dragon Song War and whatever from, you know, basically revisiting all the old places and whatnot. Well, Alphano takes his own journey, very, pretty much almost identical to that on his own in one of the anniversary tales. And he does realize that, yeah, he's kind of been a dick to his sister. So I don't think it's completely outside any sort of realm of possibility that he's actually partially discussed this with Tataru at one point and Tataru, her having herself make something for her in the hopes that Elise one day might come back, which she obviously has. I mean, I can't prove that's how it went down, but that's how I'm headcanning it because yeah, it, it is a fair point that how the hell did she make something so soon? But I'm guessing she probably had it made in advance. I mean, she had something for Yastola practically three seconds after we rescued her from the live stream, so... Now, of course, this line wouldn't exist if you actually didn't do Binding Coil of Bahamut, but of course we did on this character. Long ass time ago. It doesn't really make a difference to actually what's going on in this patch, but it is a nice little nod. It takes time to get dressed. I have uh, uh, mixed feelings about this outfit. Mo mostly, mostly the ice skates are, are just what fucking seals it for. I'm like, just no, no. Who the hell thought of that? Very funny. And yet you were still wearing matching crap when you came to yours. Yeah, I would have think that would be like the first thing you ditched. But I guess after so many years of it, you, you just kind of just roll with it and just become complacent in it as much as it annoys you. Because I, I suppose never really being able to just make your own choices and dress yourself, you, you, you never really desire a knack for that, I guess. I don't know. Oh, 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 more doodle incidents. Oh, oh, come on, come on. We gotta get the dirt on you somehow. Oh, no, 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 I am very interested in this. Very interested in this. It's fine, it's total fine. So one thing we can ask her about here is if you remember at the very end of A Realm Reborn, apparently she's the one who sent that merchant dude to, to come try to get us out of the city. What the hell was that all about? Okay, I, I can deal with that. So as we make our way back to the Waking Sands, I have a minor rant. And this is dedicated more to the writers than Thancred's character, but that line he spewed a couple episodes back about, you know, her running afoul with the Warriors of Darkness and, you know, like, poorly. Uh, yeah, no. Fucking hell, Thancred. How much information did she just exposit about them and the Asians' plans right in front of you? You didn't get that information. She did. Because if you did, you would have easily spouted it to everybody else while she was still unconscious. And yet you don't, meaning you didn't walk away with that much information while well, she did. Now, you could argue, well, she eventually got herself shot, she was playing with fire, and she was kind of asking for it, and yet, while I won't disagree on that point, she's also not the kind of person to just sit around. She is very proactive, very in your face. 
Need I remind you that this is the girl who both got knocked flat on her ass by her business grandfather and had an attempt blatantly made on her life by Bahamut and she still got right the fuck back up and just kept on fighting. There was She didn't go give up or anything. Yeah, she did have a moment here or there where like, like, ow, that fucking hurts and this really kind of sucks. But you know what? Fuck you guys. Because she's not that kind of person. Of course she was going to just keep going at this until either she felt... Either she eventually got caught and had to escape where to the point where going back and getting more information was just going to be too dangerous or when she felt like she was satisfied enough with the information she had, which she obviously wasn't. And funny story about her anniversary tale in which she befriends a young merchant girl who unfortunately dies shortly after in a freak light landslide. Uh, she meets her while well, sitting in a bar and... This poor ass- this asshole is, uh, is trying to bully this merchant girl into an unfair deal. And Ellie's eyes, like, like, pretty much just turns around and threatens to drop kick his ass to the floor. I find that utterly hilarious. Yeah, yeah, she- she don't take shit from anybody. She's not gonna sit around and just wait for things to happen. Your mixed exposition, tell us stuff. But first, we have stories to tell you first. Yeah, what happened to you actually told the scions of this information if you were aware of it too? So why don't we like camp like, well, I guess there's too few of us. Why don't we like just ask around and start camping other beastmen places? Like we, we get a bunch of people in, in the Rising Stones. I mean, when we send out, you know, those still loyal Crystal Brave people, why don't, why don't we send people out on reconnaissance missions? You know, actually make them useful maybe? Okay, well, that's a start. Oh, you are 35 shades of fucking busted right now. You can like just hear like the wheels turning in his head that like, oh shit. Because remember, she was there in the library spying and that was the very book Elidibus gave him. Oh, snap. So busted. Hi, guys. What, what? Oh, okay. Alright, you guys stay out here. I'll go over here. Is that still cooking on the fire for me? Please, I haven't eaten, okay? My last dinner got interrupted. Bitch, I'm the warrior of light! I can ask for you pretty much whatever the fuck I want. You owe me. You all owe me. Big time. Uh, 
Gu guys, 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 guys. Captain is over here. Okay, fine. I'm just gonna leave you two as it is. Commander, what do you got for me? Um, okay. So, uh, it seems we have a potential infiltrator on her ha our hands. Yes, yes, maybe if you all walked 20 feet and walked around this tree, you might have found that out. You know, they even have a makeshift tree house in here and everything. You guys could have just climbed up there and had some fun. I would like to do that. Gee, it's almost like you guys should have come over and talked with not me. <sighs> All right, interrogation of cobbles. All righty. If I were cobbled, where would I hide? Where would I hide? It's too bad I can't get up into the treehouse. Just, just run right through it. It's kind of poopy. Uh, 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 underneath? Okay, good, good. Ooh, quite small for, okay. All right, I guess that's a helpful hint. Yeah, I might hide in a nook and cranny too. Is he hiding in one of the barrels maybe? Maybe he's in this box. I I'm just messing around, I know where he is. <laughs> Hi. Probably. But it's also equally possible that he's hiding. Afraid to escape the camp for fear of getting caught. Oh my god, he's so adorable! Oh my god, he's so tiny! Little cobbled, where'd you go? You hiding underneath? Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> What's such a tiny cobbled be doing around here? It's not like you could carry that many crystals. You gotta go the long way around. But damn, I must say he is rather fast. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we'll, we'll talk. Okay, we're not. I, I don't want to hurt you. I just need to ask you questions. It, it well, it's an interrogation, but but we'll turn this into a friendly interview if you'll just stop running away. God, this poor little thing is like terrified. I'm not going to eat you. I know I'm very hungry, but cobbled is not amongst my favorites.
Okay, all right, okay, all right, all right. Let's calm down, calm down. No, no, I got him. Don't take any credit for this. The poor thing is frightened. Don't scare him away. Yeah, let, let, I mean, I know he's he's technically a beast man, but yes, let, let's just draw our weapons on a tiny creature. Hi, Gabu. Dang, the crickets in the background here are really loud. <laughs> I mean in the game, not actually outside. Crickets don't live where I am. Yeah, and screw that other guy. Let's all be friends! That's what we do here in this expansion, guys. We make friends! I think he needs some tail pets. But why would you tell us this? I mean, we kind of already suspected this, but why come to us for help? Oh, that is Oligon levels of fucked up. So yes, now we are mission save Gabu's parents. <laughs> It's actually an amazement that people actually have parents in this game at this point sometimes. But yeah, one of the one of the really nice touches about this scene, and it's kind of very subtle, that I like how she gets down on his knees and actually like talks to him how he is a frightened child. Alphano, I love Alphano and all, but he has this this pesky little I hesitate to use the word problem issue, I guess, that he talks to everybody as if they were an adult, and that doesn't always work. Especially for situations like these. You can't talk to a frightened child, you know, as if you were a sophisticated adult. You just can't. You have to get, like, down on the level and kind of comfort him, and I like how she, she comes in and does that, that very quickly. Well, apparently they hate our guests more, so... Yeah. I mean, he came to us for help, so... Alright, what can you tell us, Gabu? Okay, but from where? Oh, this little guy is so smart. <laughs> I love him. He's like, oh, oh, oh. He's, he's 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 like that child in class that's like raising their arms because they know the answer to the teacher's question. It's like, oh, teacher, pick me, pick me. Like arms flailing in the air. But we'll come with you. 
Oh, what a brave little guy. So I rather like how for once we're, we're actually able to do this. That we're, we're actually going and actively stealing their crystal supplies. And we're actually able to make it there in time. I mean, granted, we, we do make it to Zelfatal pretty much mostly in time to, to stop the rituals from, come like, completely, totally summoning Gerudas complete ass on us and everything. But it's really nice to see an actual proactive approach to this. Most of the times, like, granted, we, we don't really get this kind of opportunity, but... Okay, okay, so so I'm the tall giraffe, so I'm the one who has to do all the carrying, huh? Well, I suppose that's fair, I guess. Where am I shoving these? Like, is it really wise for me to be just walking around with a bunch of crystals in my pants? Like, it'd be really funny if this is, like, all a trap. And they're like, Haha, you brought all the crystals together! And, like, someone, like, tightened, like, right off from under my dress. That would be hysterical. Terrifying, but hysterical. Okay, that was a bit unnecessary, but okay. Yes, I will. D d you're supposed to be guarding while I pick up the boxes of crystals. Dude, we're in Beastman territory, okay? It, it, it is not really the time to be examining boxes. Oh, somebody didn't peel the sticker off all the way, apparently. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll speculate later. All right, let's get more of these crystals. I love this. <laughs> like, who are the Asians? Who the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this is the biggest of them all. All right, so let's go there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wait, what? I don't see no box crystals here. Maybe this bomb guy ate it. Maybe the grenade blew them up. I, I, is that even metaphysically possible in this universe? I mean, I'm, I'm sure we, we'd probably see the resulting ethereal explosion of some kind, I, I suppose, but... Yes, I'm being silly. But we bust open one of those boxes. I'm gonna get a crowbar. Well, why? Because they want to summon Titan. They kind of need them. He's still worried about his little parents.
Yeah, yeah, good idea, good idea. Bringing the crystals with us would be a very, very, very bad idea. No, 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 talk to her. Thank you, controller. Yeah, all right. Now take my stuff. And go. Run for it. Before they figure out what the hell is going on. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're way better at that. Not that he's afraid of that stuff anymore, but... Hooray! So that's going to be it for this episode because I've already dragged this on long enough. I kind of lost track of time. So we'll be... We'll be... Will we make it in time to save Gabu and his parents? Can, can we prevent the summoning of Titan? Will a shorty pants make it back to camp with the crystals in tow without being attacked? I don't know. We'll find out next time. Please join me then. Thank you for watching, my friends.